I wonder if anyone else noticed that the stock market is currently trading like the cryptocurrency hype. TLDR guys, I think Fisker is a shit investment. However, I've got better recommendations for you guys. Hey everyone, Steve here from Eleven Mission channel where we talk about lucrative but sound investment strategies and opportunities based on the requests from the Eleven Mission collective. Today we're going to talk about Fisker, a brand new IPO that I frankly think has virtually no upside. The stock is getting pumped like crazy because it's going IPO at the right time. But I'm going to give you a list of compelling reasons why I think Fisker is a bad investment. Then I'm going to provide you a list of stocks in the same industry that are much better investment opportunities. So if this is the type of content you've been looking for, please hit the like button and let's get started. So let's touch on what Fisker is. Fisker is another electric, eco-friendly car company. They were actually around in 2008 where they were funded by VC Kleiner Perkin, which is actually a huge deal, and then they went bankrupt in 2013. They sold out most of their assets but kept the name. Fisker himself is actually a really reputable and famous car designer. And he's kept the name to design what it is today, which is an SUV. As is, the game that Fisker is interested in is being more affordable and being eco-friendly. And this SUV is supposed to accomplish that. It has a solar panel roof, it has recycled materials that's built inside, and it's electrically powered. All of this combined at a price point of about $37,500. I have a problem with that statement already because Honda Pilot is around $31,000, Toyota RAV is around $28,000, the BMW and Audi SUVs hover around the 42000 And so to me, it seems like he's more interested in playing the price game while building an eco-friendly car. There's nothing wrong with it per se, but that is not a real value prop. It's not affordable. Now you might say that there are tax incentives that lower the cost of the SUV for consumers. I counter you this, Trump hates anything green and he is trying to cut all of these fundings. So are you sure you're going to be paying 32000 instead of 37000 And that doesn't even include four grand in taxes. My biggest concern about all consumer-driven automotive companies right now is that we are at the end of a bubble. We are almost in a full-blown recession. And so when that happens, the automotive industry is going to get cut. That's been proven time and time again. Just look at the last one. A ton of automotive companies got in trouble. And so if this company doesn't have a commercial arm, then it's going to have problems. Rich people are gonna buy expensive stuff because they can afford it. They can afford to look at a car and say, I want it to be eco-friendly too because I don't care about the price as much. Whereas for people who care about affordability, they're gonna look at the price and go with a cheaper price because that is what's most important. And if it's five, six grand more than the cheapest car, why would they do that? Buying an electric car is just not an economical play right now. My point is strengthened by the fact that both the CEO of Honda and BMW has pointed out that there is essentially very, very little demand of electric vehicles, green vehicles, outside of the coasts. Because everyone else, they don't really see the point. There's not that green mentality yet. And with a high price point, there's even less incentive. So until that mentality changes, or the car becomes significantly cheaper, most people are not gonna give a fajita about paying extra to have a greener car. My last concern is that Fisker doesn't really have any product differentiation or uniqueness to it. Yes, it's eco-friendly, but many car manufacturers are creating eco-friendly cars. Yes, it uses recycled materials, but there are plenty of car companies that are also using recycled materials for their greener cars. The only uniqueness that I hear about this company is that its roof is a solar panel. And so it creates energy while it's parked outside. But as a product manager, I see so many problems with this. For example, Colorado every single year has a hail sale because they will have hails, cars get damaged, and you can buy these cars for cheaper. Can these solar panel roofs survive that? If it starts snowing like crazy, I'm sure you've seen roofs being damaged by snow, right? So have you thought about that? Is this going to be better than a metal roof? Is it going to be as durable as Elon Musk's solar panel roof? I mean, I frankly have so many doubts about the efficacy of their solar panel roof. And lastly, if you're going to buy a reasonably expensive car, I think there's a reasonable expectation that you'll be parking the car inside a lot. 
So if you're avoiding the weather, then you're also avoiding the sun. Therefore, the roof is not getting put to use. So there are so many flaws to a solar panel roof. It makes no sense to me. In this stage of electric cars as we know it, it really is not an economic option. Because even with the tax incentives, you're still paying at least 30 grand for a car. Now, if you look at the US Department of Transportation's statistics, on average, a person drives about 13,000 miles. And let's say worst case scenario, you own a Hummer. So that's 15 miles per gallon on average. You basically 13,000 miles divided by uh, 15 to get the number of gallons, multiply that by four because you're paying premium and you're paying about $3,500, $3,600 a year on gasoline. Worst case scenario. Now, if you get an electric car, you're paying about five to $600 a year, which is a huge savings. But you have to remember, you just paid $30,000 upfront to get a car. That basically means that unless the car is super, super cheap, or everyone has this mentality of going green, you're not going to have enough people to buy these cars. You're going to have to sell to people who don't care about affordability, but care about going green, which that market does exist. And if you go super cheap, which Fisker isn't, then you have the Priuses and the Leafs and the uh, Chevy Volt, you know, those own the lower side. And all of that market has been captured in the last 10 years. These companies have been very, very effective at doing that. So with zero rational product innovation and going into a market that doesn't really exist for Fisker, plus a record for failure, I would highly, highly recommend that you avoid this company. That being said, I have three recommendations that are better. I talked about how consumer automotive is not the best investment during recessions. But if you can find a company that does commercial automotives, that's a good investment. Because upgrades and tax deductions, they're always going to happen. On top of that, in this particular industry, when we're talking about you know, this optimization of better transportation because we're more reliant on good transportation, this makes more and more sense. So the number one recommendation I have is Helium. The second one is Nikola. Nikola is also in the commercial space, even though they're dabbling in the uh, consumer space. And this is particularly interesting as well because they have a ton of contracts signed on paper, even though they haven't produced any products yet. That is also a high risk, high reward company that you can invest in. The third one is a lot less risky, but just as interesting, and it's Graph. They are a company that's trying to reverse merge with Velodyne. They are a company that's trying to reverse merge with a LiDAR company. LiDAR is a technology that's basically going to help your car see things better. It's going to create AI for your car, and it's already being adopted by a lot of reputable companies, Mercedes included. So if you invest in a graph, you're basically investing in a company that already has revenue and already has a reputation that it works. Plus, it has a ton of applications, both in the consumer space and the commercial ones. So these are companies that have high risk, high rewards. They all have trade-offs, but they are all better investments than Fisker. All right, guys, I hope you found this content useful. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button. If you disagree with me or have any questions, concerns, or requests, please leave a comment. I would love to hear from you guys and build a dialogue. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to working with you next time. Thank you.